Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our daily time together in God's word and in prayer, continuing through the words and the footsteps of Jesus. We are in John chapter 15. Uh, we started yesterday with the story of Jesus and the um, Samaritan woman. And we talked about Jesus interaction with her and talking about the difference between uh, physical water, physical drink, and living water, the spiritual uh, eternal life that Jesus can give us. Um, we begin today in verse 15 as we continue with this interaction. Um, after Jesus has told this woman about the water that he is offering, uh, she says this, please, sir, give me this water then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get water. Jesus tells her, go and get your husband. Now, this is an interesting uh, response to this uh, water request. Her, her reply is, I don't have a husband. And then we see why Jesus um, made this reply to her in her, her to her request for water. Uh, and she replies that she doesn't have a husband and Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband. For you've had five husbands and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim? where our ancestors worship. Jesus replied, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming, indeed it is here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. So what is going on here in this uh, continuing conversation? Jesus replies to her, replies to her request for water by telling her to go get her husband. And what does that have to do with water? Well, uh, remember, she is talking on spiritual, on uh, physical terms. Jesus is talking on spiritual terms. So when he tells her to go get her husband, he is actually saying to her, I know more about you than you really think. And it's on spiritual, a spiritual level that I know about you. And so he continues to tell her exactly what he knows about her. And he, he turns the conversation um, a, a little bit deeper because he started off by talking about spiritual living water and she didn't get it. She didn't understand. She wanted to talk about how she would not have to go to this well all the time physically and get water. So Jesus turns it and says, let's go deeper. Let me tell you, I know something deeper about you. I know more about you than just this physical water and, and just surface level spiritual water that we're talking about. He says, I know something about you on a deeply spiritual level that your life is not spiritually where it needs to be, that your heart is not right, that you've been living in sin and that you need to get things right with God. And, and then he says um, these words, these famous words, um, but the time is coming, indeed it is here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. You see, Jesus was trying to get those who were followers of God during this time, whether they were Jews or Samaritans or any other 
nationality that that had become followers of God to understand that it is more than just talking about going to the temple and doing uh, public worship. That is important. Jesus makes that very clear. Jesus did that all the time. But what he was trying to tell her and what he is trying to tell us is that true worshipers of God worship from the heart, worship from our spirits. And, and that is what he is encouraging us to do. So when we, as followers of Christ, spend time in worship, whether it is in our daily uh, devotion time, by ourselves with God in the word or whether it is in corporate worship times on Sunday or other days or in our small groups or life groups what he is saying is that true worship comes from the heart and so I would encourage you that the next time maybe it's right after we finish this time together and maybe you spend some time in prayer spend some time in worship or um this coming Sunday as we celebrate Palm Sunday or um, in your life group or small group, whatever group you meet in, um, look at that as more of a time of worship than you've ever looked at before and, and understand that it's a spiritual worship that God is looking for and that he wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. He wants us to, to be honest with him. He wants us to be sincere with him from the deepest parts of our hearts and the, the deepest deepest parts of our beings he wants us to cry out to him to worship him and and to seek his face each and every day let that be our challenge for today let's pray again lord god we come to you this morning as we continue through the words of jesus and the the interactions he had with people help us to understand once again that Jesus is far more concerned about our spiritual condition than he is about our physical condition. He's far more concerned about our character than he is about our comfort. Help us to worship you today, Father, in spirit and in truth, and to seek you with our whole hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I pray you'll have a wonderful day. Go out there and serve God by serving others. And until tomorrow morning, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. And may you fall just a little bit deeper in love with Jesus today. Have a great day. God bless you. Take care.